Hello everyone! In this video, we'll dissect a sample of one of the interesting malware families at the moment, the Imotet Trojan. It even has its own Wikipedia page. It is usually distributed in email attachments, password protected, with the password included in the body. Once the user opens the attachment, the Word document will ask for enabling macros. This will trigger the execution of the payload, which, in the end, contacts a server to get the next stage. The attackers behind Emotet family created an infrastructure of compromised machines for which they then sell access in an infrastructure as a service model. In this video, we'll take a sample document and see how to deobfuscate all the stages until we find the C2 URLs. We will play with Visual Basic code and a bit of PowerShell as well. So let's begin with the malicious document. In this case, we're presented with a picture that asks the user to enable macro content. We could use tools like Oli Dump or Office Mal Scanner to extract the macro code, but in this case, it is not actually enough to get the macros and we will see in a moment why. We still need to use the graphical interface of MS Word. In order to play with macros, we first need to enable the developer tab. Do that by going to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and enable the developer toolbar there. Let's see what macros we uncover. In this case here, we have a function which is executed when the document is opened. The function document open will be called when the user enables the macros. Strangely, as you can see here, it seems to just create an array. Not crazy interesting so far, but let's see. If we look throughout this array, we notice a call to another function, this one over here. We also have a form here. And here's why I was saying it's not enough to only look at the macro code. We still need access to the forms via the interface. The form is actually very tricky. Notice it contains a few elements. But if we delete these frame objects on top, we start seeing new previously hidden drop boxes. Each drop box hides a piece of information that will be used later. For example, this drop box has the value over here in the table. This one has another value. The values of these boxes are used throughout the code to construct the obfuscation scheme. Check the code behind this form. Right click, view code. Seems like a lot of code, but don't worry, we'll clean it. Let's copy it and analyze separately. To see what happens. Okay. All right. We need to display this as VB script. So we enjoy nice syntax highlighting. The obfuscation scheme behind emoted documents is so far always the same, even though variable names and junk code differs. First thing to do is remove all the declarations that contain the mid function because 
these variables are never used. As we can see, this is used just once, but next one is never used. We could easily get rid of all this junk code, but it's much quicker to just come through the code and spot the relevant parts. For example, this portion over here is relevant because it builds a character from ASCII code 90 plus 25, which is then used down here. To create another variable, which is in turn used in a function. Let's inspect the function code and see what it does. Hmm. Search. Okay, I found the function. The function will call first clean string, which will remove non-ASCII characters. After that, it will split the string based on a short delimiter string. The code removes any occurrences of this short string. There's more to this obfuscation, but so far looks easy. Let's remove this manually and see what happens. Repre replace it everywhere with nothing. Okay, we start to notice something. This is probably win management. And next win 32. This is probably an S. Win M, G, M, T, S. Next probably a P to create the win 32 process string. This variable, as we mentioned before, is actually found in the form. Starts with G88. Let's find this value in the form. Here's the form over here. That's the one. Notice it starts with G8 and has the value P, capital letter P. Back to the code. This string here is process, and this variable is defined above. Probably the letter S constructed using chr function. Let's see what else we can learn from the code. If we scan through the instructions, there is another place where the obfuscation function was applied. Let's see. Towards the end of the script. Searching. This is the function. It applies the same deobfuscation that removes a group of letters to this parameter value. which comes from alternative text of something. Let's see what exactly. This is inline shapes item one, meaning the first shape in the document, which is the picture we saw initially. The code will extract something out of the alternative text of the image that's why I was saying we also need a graphical interface. Let's see how to get it. Right click on the image, select picture, then alt text. Notice very interestingly that it starts with power, then also the word, the word shell. This is the bit that will get removed. Let's copy this one and see what it means. Okay. The portion that gets removed is in the deobfuscation routine. This is the one.
I actually deleted it before during the replace. No problem, it's still in the replace history. Remove it and let's see what we get. The next stage unravels. There's an encoded base64 command that gets passed to PowerShell to be executed. This is the end of the first stage. In the next part, we'll continue from here and deobfuscate the PowerShell portion. Thank you very much for watching. Looking forward for your comments and see you in the next video. Cheers!